All right. Okay, now we're recording. As my mother would say, we're cooking with gas. Um, so, um, um, just as an FYI, I was kind of looking at, you notice that we're on chapter nine and, and we've got about seven more chapters to go. So <clears throat> we will, uh, if I can cover, or if we can cover a chapter a, a chapter a week, that should take us until just before the end of April. Um, but you know me, I don't wanna rush through this conversation. Uh, for those of you who have been a part of this Bible study or have been a part of other Bibles, I took care of your job. <laughs> Alex, once again, I'm doing your job. <laughs> just saying. I just want an increase in pay. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> and I'll get another 10% of nothing. So. Uh, the what? Holy cards. Or, yeah, no, please. I have so many holy cards. <laughs> um, what was I saying? So, yeah, if, um, for those of you who have been a part of my Bible study when I, when I was working, we actually went until like mid-May. Sometimes we went to early June, um, depending on what we were studying. So uh, we may, it may look more like the old days, the good old days, you know. Uh, and, and again, if, if, if your plan was to not be here after Easter, then you know that you can always get the, the lessons online. Uh, and, uh, uh, and if you want copies of my Bible study, the last screen gives you my email address. And, and you can always email me and I'm happy to um, send you the uh, copies of my notes. Um, uh, okay, so I'm trying to think if there is any... And I'm wearing the green today because I wear red on the 17th. 19th is St. Joseph, but I wear red just in protest that nobody wears red in protest. Yes, yeah. Yes, well, good. Say, not the 19th is St. Joseph, and again, we were having a conversation about how of, so Mary is considered, if, if, if we were to take all the saints and put them in order of importance, Mary would be the pinnacle, right? Because she would be, um, uh, a part of her charm is that not only is she human, but she was the sole human who was born without original sin. Yes, Jesus Christ was born without original sin, but he was also God. So we can't, you know, equate Mary to Jesus. Um, but Joseph... Joseph would be right below her, and yet we tend to negate him um, because there is so little known about him. And, and so many other saints take precedence over St. Joseph, but uh, to me, he, he um, yeah, I, I want to be more like him, you know, because he, like me, has original sin, and he, like me, um, struggled and Mary did too I'm not saying Jesus did too in their humanity I'm not saying that they didn't but we just need to we need to push Joseph okay so I want to hear the wearing of the red on the 19th and no red beer because I don't think Joseph uh, drank drank beer okay. just red wine there you go red red wine okay sorry I'm a little punchy today because I'm a little tired today, so. All right, um, before we get started, uh, the question has been posed to me about whether we should start wearing name tags. Okay, because the, 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 that we all are familiar with each other's faces, but it's kind of like many, when it comes time to call their attention, it's like, hey, you in the green, you know? <laughs> So um, if I were to supply us with a bunch of name tags, I could put them on the table here with pens, and, and all you would need to do is put your first name. 
and your correct first name, John Wayne, <laughs> is not, <laughs> well, we were talking about it earlier, and he said he used to like to prank and going to conferences, and he'd put like John Wayne or <laughs> Paul Newman. One of you can put Paul, not the saint. I think everybody knows that. I this weekend. There was a guy there who put his name Ed on the name tag. And we were talking to him because I brought my friend Ed. Okay. And he said my real name is Ed So Ford. But his last name is Carr. Oh. Yeah, I have a, um, a name story, too, I, that has nothing to do with, but sharing name stories. A friend of mine was a principal of an inner city Detroit school, and um, uh, they were having their kindergarten roundup, and uh, the parent filled out the form and handed it to the secretary, and the secretary called my friend over and said, uh, just check out this name. In the, she, okay, she says, point the parent out to me. So she did, she showed, you know, so she went over to the mother and said, um, uh, you know, uh, you introduced yourself and she goes, oh, your, your, your daughter has a very interesting name. How do you pronounce it? Oh, sister, it's Famali. <laughs> yeah, you've heard this joke. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. And, uh, and she goes, Famali? She says, well, why, you know, where did you get that name? And she says, oh, I didn't name my daughter. Um, the last name was Jones. She says, the hospital did. <laughs> when the baby was rolled in, female Jones. Uh, he had a Famali too? Yeah. The, and, and it's, <laughs> you know, on TikTok, every once in a while, you'll have these teachers trying to pronounce the names of their students, you know, and, it, and it's like, um, la, and it's Ladasha, L-A dash mark, S-H-A or something like that, you know, it's like crazy. All right, but then we have the names of the Bible. And those are pretty crazy, too. Okay, so name tags. I will make sure that we get name tags next week. Um, and uh, just, rem just uh, come in. And, and, then now, and then when you see the name, start calling them by name. Because the more you say their name, don't just eyeball it. Ellen and Marie, it's so good. You know, because the more you say it, the more it, you, it stays within your, your brain. Um, and speaking of names, here comes Aileen. Yes, can I help you? Thank you, Aileen. Thank you, Aileen. You've helped a lot. Yeah, we appreciate all the goodies you set out. Um, okay, so t and today what, what we're going to do um, at the beginning is to do just a bit of a, a little bit of a review uh, of, of, because we're moving into a new section of, or the, the last major section of St. Paul's um, expose on salvation history, and a very interesting one to boot. Um, and then, uh, then, then we will start, we will go into chapter 9, the rest of ch chapter 9, but we will not complete chapter 9. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll save the last verse or so uh, to uh, next week, okay? Um, and w unless there's any comments, questions, concerns, anything that came up at, during the week, then let us pray. And we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Oh, by the Holy Spirit, you are, Spirit, help us to what is right and always rejoice in your consolations. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Um, so just as a, as a review, a reminder, um, there, uh, the, the, the way St. Paul's letter is set up um, is that, that, the, is, that he has the introduction um, in chapter 1, but then the majority of the letter is of looking at an exposition of the gospel. So he, St. Paul is, is evangelizing. He is trying to educate and to explain um, God's plan of salvation history, but, but in the way only St. Paul could do, and that is by an anticipating questions. Sometimes we hear the questions, sometimes we don't. Um, but anticipating questions and answering those. And so in this last section um, of chapter 9 through chapter 11, St. Paul is now, he's in the other, he, he has, has uh, uh, provided um, an explanation of how uh, both the Jews and the Gentiles have been divinely adopted by God and how God has a plan for and a purpose for their, their um, uh, in terms of salvation history. But now St. Paul is going back and he is actually answering questions that or concerns that he believes would crop up. Um, so the first one being that now the Messiah has come, where does that leave Israel's story uh, and role in salvation history? And, and I, even in, as we beginning this, this, these chapters, I've really appreciated this because I've wondered about this, you know, in terms of, um, uh, uh, I, I get, you know, that there were, they were faithful Israelites and that there were, the majority were not all that faithful. But where does that leave all those people who were not faithful? And, and where does that leave those who, and that's his second question, um, because some Jews continue to resist the gospel, does that mean God has rejected them as his chosen people? You know, are we the chosen people now? And the answer to that is yes, but what does that leave those people? It's kind of like, I'm, okay, hey, you take, this document well you're not doing the job i want so now you take it is that kind of the 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 god's plan and so what we're going to learn today is no that god has yes we are the chosen people but god has not forgotten the original people that he he chose um, even if they choose to not recognize jesus as uh, as lord and savior and then the third question, question being, what of all the, uh, and what of all the promises in the Old Testament that God will save and, to, will save and restore the 12 tribes? Um, and we're going to kind of look at that today, too, that, you know, God said, like, especially as the, the, the Assyrians were conquering the land, their lands, and you have Hosea and Isaiah and you have other and Amos who are, are um, offering comfort to, you know, don't worry, God will restore our tribes. Okay, so the question is, um, you brought your judgment down upon these, uh, these tribes originally. What does that mean? Are you going to actually restore these into 12 tribes? And St. Paul kind of answers that today as well. Um, so I'm, 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 my brain is, is have doing excited dances as I'm doing my study. Even if yours are going, oh, no, I don't. Ah! <laughs> I do that too. Don't worry, I do that too. Um, and then again, so in, in this, this section that, you know, um, the freedom of God's word to Israel, um, the failure of Israel to heed God's word, and then the rest restoration of all of Israel, and then the final doxology is what will be in chapter, chapters 9 through 11. And again, just as a reminder that um, when, when in, in this, especially in this section, um, when St. Paul uses Israelites, he's talking about the ancient Israelites. So he's talking about those original 12 tribes. He's talking about um, um, that the time um, before 
um, uh, Babylon, in which happened in 540 BC, um, conquered um, Jerusalem and, and the remaining tribes of Judah. Um, so, Saint, um, uh, from, yeah, not all Israelites are Jews, but all Jews are Israelites. Okay. All right. Israelites are, so all, all, all Jews are Israelites. Anybody who, who, can, who can show a, a pure lineage back to the original 12 tribes. So, so they were in Babylon, but they were allowed to. The, 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 the Jews who, um, uh, yeah, so the difference is that, that when Assyria conquered um, the land when they so the northern tribes and came into the the southern um, the southern tribes as well. Um, uh, they they took so they 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 would take some of the Israelites back to the lands that they conquered and put them in situations where if they wanted to marry and procreate, they had to marry among the people that were there. Um, some they left, but they also then imported other slaves and their own people. So again, if they, it, was, it was very, very difficult. If you are the only Israelite, um, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to either your lineage dies out or you marry and therefore create an impure bloodline. And this is, so when, when Jesus, when we read in the New Testament about the Samaritans, this is who the Samaritans are. Yeah, the Samaritans are those who have an impure bloodline because their land was conquered, they intermarried um, uh, uh, as survival, and, um, but they, they, and they also created their own religion, which does not have a temple in Jerusalem. So that was an issue as well, but that's what, um, um, why the, the, the proud and haughty, the arrogant um, Jews, those who, when Babylon conquered them, they allowed them to remain as a cluster, as a community, as a, as a whole group. So did some of them marry Babylonians? Oh, I'm sure they did. But there was enough of a pure bloodline that, was ab that they were able to maintain so that, that, that this lineage to Jesus Christ um, would be maintained. And this is all a part of God's plan of salvation. So promises that were made in ancient times, God orchestrated to, have, to, main, to, be, to happen so that those promises would be fulfilled. Yes, Maureen. What was the name of the Samaritan religion? The name of the Samaritan religion. You said they had their own religion. Yes, they did. And they worshipped on, on a, I can't, I, you know what, let me, I will bring that back to you next week. Uh, unless somebody else knows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the difference between the Assyrians and the Babylonians, the Assyrians theory was if you split up all these people, not enough of them could get together to revolt. Yeah. And but they were smaller in Babylonia. The Babylonians I guess keep them together and show them that they can live here, they would be more content and also not revolt. So was the difference And, and the Babylonians also had a, a, a genuine respect for other cultures. And so like when, uh, Babylon, actually, there were three waves of, of coming into Jerusalem and taking um, um, the Jews to Babylon. And the first wave was to take all of the scholars and all of the, 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 the rich and, and the powerful um, because they, 
a part of it was they 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 wanted to know what these people knew, and and so. Um, uh, so it, it's a difference between, yes, the, the arrogance of the Assyrians saying, our goal here is to control you, and the way to control you is to divide you, um, as opposed to the Babylonians who said, you know, we respect what you have to offer. We want you to offer that in our land, so we're going to bring you over, and, but we'll allow you to continue to... to, to um, to live the way you have lived and to pray the way you have prayed, um, um, you know, so forth and so on. So yeah, thank you. So the Jews today, are they Israelites? The Jews, to, so the answer, Maureen's question is, are the Jews today, are they Israelites or are they Jews? And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> because all Jews are Israelites. They can, they can, and and a ver very orthodox, or um, there's another word I'm not thinking of, but there are there are some groups of Jew Jews, and there are some individuals within the Jews today who can actually trace their lineage all the way back to Abraham. So. Um, uh, so yes, so all Jews are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. So Jews today are Israelites. But Jews actually, the name Jews come from Judah because that was, that, it was the tribe of Judah that, that was the predominant tribe um, in control of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Kohan. Right. Or Q U. Is the most consistent DNA of any surname in the world. That they all trace their name back to the son of Levi, Korah. Oh, okay, okay. And it shows in their DNA. Wow. Cohen? So C K doesn't matter, um, O H N. Yeah, or E N. Or yeah, and no matter, regardless of how it's spelled, yeah, um, has the mo the the strongest genetic consistency. Um, interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, any other questions before moving on? All right. So. Um, uh, again, just a summary of what we looked at last week in, in chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. So um, St. Paul is, the first thing he is offering in, in the, those early verses is in praise of the nation of Israel. He wants um, everyone to understand that, that, that God meant um, the Israelites to be a gift. And, and this is the, the bolded is taken from, I think, verse... Uh, four and five, I believe. Um, so, you know, that the, the, is, the Israelites, um, uh, they, they received the first adoption. They were the, they, so they received the divine adoption. They offered the glory um, of God because um, they personally witnessed the power of the Lord throughout their history. Um, it is through the, through the Israelites that covenants through the great leadership were, were um, initiated and enacted um, like Abraham and with Moses and with David. Um, there was, it was through the Israelites that we received the law. You know, when in, and, and it just hit me when we, right now, um, uh, I, I listen to NPR and, and one of the, the, um, conversations that seems to be coming up more often than not is how there is a, a growing hatred of the Jews. You know, a lot of um, uh, hate crimes. The hate crimes are increasing. And um, so as, and some of that, I'm not going to say all of it, but some of that comes from the Christian community. Because um, in fundamentalism or even within Catholicism, well, they didn't 
they didn't recognize Jesus, so they're out of the picture, you know. But they are, um, and, and St. Paul is basically making their, the, they're our family. They're, they're our older brother or sister. And, and, um, and they, they're, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be us. You know, we wouldn't have Jesus. And, and so looking, you know, looking at this list, it, it just hits me how much, how appreciative we need to be of, of, um, the, of the Jewish people and the Israelites in terms of all the faith, those who were faithful, not only endured, but gave in regards to their, their commitment to God and, and to fostering that relationship. You know, like the getting, receiving the law, the Ten Commandments, you know. Um, while our worship today is different, uh, some of what we do, in, he, even in the Mass, is based on the ancient worship that was given um, to Moses and then developed over time. Um, the promises that were offered through the patriarchs, you know, I will, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars. Um, and then the, the, um, the, they can get the gift of the Messiah <clears throat> as, um, uh, you know, he was a Jew. I remember doing a first communion pre preparation. And I, um, so I had all the parents there. Uh, and I was, was trying to not only tell them how, you know, first communion was, but I wanted to educate them. Because parents are meant to be the first, first teachers of faith. And so I was doing this little teaching about the Last Supper. And I made the statement, you know, since Jesus was a good Jew, he participated in a Seder meal. Well, I got the words, Jesus was a good Jew. And this man stood up and he goes, what are you saying? In his mind, Jesus was Catholic. <laughs> And, you know, and we, we look at that and we, we see the folly of it, but this is why we educate ourselves. You know, this is why we're here, is because there, I would suspect there are a lot of people in the church today that would say that Jesus was Catholic, or at least Christian, you know. So, you know, we... we because that, that what, that, they, that Jesus was Catholic or, you know what, I, I'm not going to presume to read their minds, but my, my own experience tells me that, um, that in, in our own insecurities, we want to fortify ourselves with names to drop, I guess is the best way to put that. You know, um, uh, uh, knowing, you know, having that heritage. And so I'm Catholic, so therefore Jesus is. Jesus must have been Catholic. Um, and, and it could be that they, at some point, some well-intentioned parent or teacher or grandparent or priest or, or whatever actually made that kind of a comment, you know. Jesus in his Catholicism, not that he was Catholic, but Jesus in his Catholicism, well, that means to some minds, Jesus was Catholic. And, yeah, and, yeah, Jesus wasn't. Okay? Yes, sir. I mean, a lot of us were taught early that uh, we had to be Catholic. Yes, Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we should have to be Catholic. Yeah. There, there's, there's a, um, a joke that I have, um, I've, I've told before about how, and I won't tell the whole joke, but this Catholic dies and, and St. Peter, or no, this, this person dies and, and, um, who believed in God and believed in Jesus, but, but was, went to a variety of different churches. And so St. Peter says, you get to choose whichever house you want to worship in. And, uh, and so they go to these different places, but when they come to the house of the Catholics, they had to tiptoe. And when they tiptoed away, and why did we do that? And he says, well, the Catholics think they're the only ones up here, you know. Um, 
but it, it what the what St. Paul is going to uh, attempt to help us understand is is the the whole idea of how we're in this journey together. We have and and a part of this journey that we're on, we have a rich heritage that we cannot disc discount or discredit. And um, so that's that's leads us up to where we are now today. And any last comments, questions, concerns, and then we're gonna then we're gonna start. Yes. Abraham was what? Jewish. Yeah, Abraham was Jewish. Yes, Abraham. Yeah, was um, he was Aramaic, he was Aramaic um, but he yes, and and in some it, it, uh, yeah. Well, we're actually we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of history historicizing today. So um, we're gonna leave it to Saint Paul to teach us. Okay, not the Paul here in the room. <laughs> Although I do love Paul here in the room. And that's on camera, Paul. So you, <laughs> you, can, you can throw that back in my face someday. Okay, so we, we are looking at um, chapter 9, verses 6 through 13. Okay, and I wait, let me turn off my... But it is not that the word of God has failed. For not all who are of Israel are Israel, nor are they all children of Abraham because they are his descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall bear your name. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For this is the wording of the promise. About this time I shall return and Sarah will have a son. And not only that, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one husband, our father Isaac, before they had yet born or had anything, good or bad, in order that God's elective plans might continue, not by works but by his call, she was told, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, I loved Jacob, but hated Esau. Okay. Perfectly muddy, huh? Comments, questions, concerns? Mine says, for when Rebecca had conceived twin children. Yeah. Yeah. Esau and Jacob are twins. Yeah, yeah. My actually, mine doesn't either. Any other observations, comments, questions, concerns? Um, okay. So what 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 Saint Paul is doing for so in verse six, he's giving us a thesis statement. Uh, anybody here ever work on a master's or a, a, a doctorate and had to give your thesis? Yeah, a thesis. Yeah, coming up with the sentence or two was probably the hardest thing I ever had to do, because if you didn't have a correct thesis statement, then you you would discover that like a year and a half later, when you have to go back and prove something that you never intended to really discuss, but because it's in your thesis statement, my my this is really an aside. My um, uh, my the brother um, I have one brother who worked on two doctorates in physics um, the first he worked on at Catholic University and and he um, and he they what he didn't have to create the statement um, they uh, they gave him a formula and then he had to prove the formula and after he finished and he showed me the book of and it's just nothing but math they the, he he's ready to go and start the process of of the conversation he has to have with his his um, um, betters to you know to receive that doctorate they discovered that that formula had already been given out 
This is after a year and a half, almost two years, and he had to start over again. Yeah, anyway, back to Paul. So if you look at verse 6, um, but it is not as though the word of God has failed. So this is his thesis statement. He is assuming that somewhere in someone's mind, they're asking those questions that we looked at earlier. You know, God's, God has failed in some way. Um, for not all who are descendants from Israel belong to Israel. And what basically um, what he is, he is going to discuss in these, these coming, chap, uh, coming verses is that, that there are going to be two, uh, we have to think in terms of two groups, not Jews and Israelites, faithful and not faithful. That, that there, are, there are key people um, that are, are th the faithful. Um, people who, who have a strong relationship with God and they nurture that relationship and they, they seek to please God and they live in that relationship. And then there are those who are basically um, um, by name only, you know. Um, we all know people who will say that they're Catholic, right? Or say they're Christian or say they're some denomination, but they never darken the doorstep of a church. You know, Christmas is very secular. Easter, it's about the dress um, and, and, the, and the chocolate bunnies. Um, but there is no effort to really make a connection bet be, between, behind who, what, what the, how they're naming themselves and, and the truth behind that name. Does that make sense? So when Paul says, for not all who are descendants from Israel belong to Israel. So another way of putting that, not all who name themselves Israelites belong to God. Not in that God doesn't see them as his children, but they, are, they don't see themselves as God's children. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so there... Um, he, um, and then what he's going to do, then what he does is that he goes into um, looking at biblical history. And, and he's not only is he going to show that, <coughs> that there are these, these um, individuals with, that uh, are within a family that would be a part of the, the majority, meaning those who are in name only, but, but there are those who God has elected or that are in, in relationship with God, and they're not always the people we think they should be, okay? They're not always the firstborn, which was very important in the time of, of, um, of yeah, in the ancient times. Um, so that's, his, that's what he's, he's trying to set up here. Um, and, and one way that I kind of want to demonstrate that, okay, do not fall do not fall, is, I don't, I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but I have a handout here. Um, do me a favor. If you would be so kind. Um, that, and I, it's like I said, I, I know that you probably have seen this before, um, but in terms of the, you know, uh, this 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 was created um, when some when people were saying, I, I you know, um, but I'm not, God's not choosing me to do something spectacular. Uh, so and just, I'm going to read it through. Um, Noah got drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob lied. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses was a murderer and, and stuttered. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was afraid. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David was a murderer, an adulterer. Elijah was suicidal. I, Isaiah preached naked. 
Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Jake, jo Job was bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. <laughs> I love that one. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. The Canaanite woman was demon-possessed. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was a murderer. Timothy was a, had an ulcer, and Lazarus was dead. <laughs> you know, it, it just gives us a, a list of these, these people throughout the history of salvation history that um, you know, God selected. And, and you know, St. Paul is basically trying to uh, um, alert us to or to teach us is that, that we, we need to trust in God's selection, in God's election. Um, the other thing that, as we're, that he is going to, is, uh, wants, we need the whole to have the few. So if you, if you look at, um, let's see, let me, 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 um, all the people, if you look at David, King David, all the people that had to, to live, marry, give birth, then they married and gave birth, and they married and gave birth to get to David. And none of those names are on this list. You know, none of those names are on this list. Um, some of those names, well, all of those names are actually in scripture. But if you, if another way to kind of look at this is if you go to um, Matthew chapter 1, it gives the lineage of, of Joseph. And, and ask yourself, how many of those names do you recognize? Because they did something important. You know, Ruth. That would be a name that you would recognize, Boaz, um, because, because of their significance in this story. But most of them, it's like, I can go back and possibly find them in scripture, but their contribution was they maintained the line. And so this is what St. Paul is going to basically say, is that, yes, they are, all of them are adopted. All of them are loved by God. God's not happy with all of them, but in their being in, uh, in, the, uh, in this divine lineage, they're important. That make sense? Okay. Um, moving on to seven and, you know, uh, verses seven and nine, um, you know, uh, St. Paul is, makes this, his statement um, walking us through his, th his thinking. So he's now going to go back and he's going to start talking about true descendants. And the first one that he offers is Abraham. And why do I have nothing there? Okay, well, I'm not sure. That was supposed to be a picture of, of Abraham. And, um, and it, actually it was a, um, a, a slide that has, uh, did you know, so, we all know about Ishmael, right? Did you know that, that Abraham got married again and had six more children, all of them boys? And in, even though um, Abraham, um, uh, wait, okay, yeah, Abraham, his, uh, his first child was by Ishmael and, and with Sarah's handmaid, Ishmael was the oldest. Ishmael should have gotten the, gotten the, the promise, the, uh, the descendancy, the um, legacy of Abraham because he was the oldest. But the promise to Abraham was made to Abraham and Sarah. And um, uh, again, part of what, what um, St. Paul is trying to point out here is that, that God does what God does, not because um, sometimes God does what God does to show the majesty of God. And this is a clear moment of that. Abraham was in his 90s. And yes, he, could, he's, he obviously could still father children because he had six more kids after, after Isaac. But Sarah was younger, but not by much. 
and she would have gone, been well past her, her ability to bear children. But nothing is impossible with God. Okay? That makes sense? Ishmael was from a different woman? Yeah, from Hagar. Hagar, H-A-G-A-R. Um, yeah, so, um, so God makes this promise to Abraham and says, you know, your descendants are going to be as num many as the number of the stars in the sky. And, but, you know, like if God came to you and said, you're going to hit the lottery, wouldn't you all of a sudden start every time you bought a lottery ticket? It's, this is the one. This is the one. And after like several years, like a couple of decades of this is the one, maybe, you know, they took matters into their own hand. And Sarah said, well, maybe God forgot us. She didn't, that's, that's my thinking, not that it's in scripture. Um, I tell you what, we're going to take matters into our own hand. It wasn't uncommon. It was actually the practice. If, if, some, if the woman could not, and it was always the woman's fault, um, if the woman could not bear a, a, a children, specifically an heir, a son, then, you, then the handmaid, one of the handmaids was given to the husband, and through the handmaid was the heir produced. And that's what Sarah did. She said, here. Um, unfortunately, once... Um, Isaac was born, ha um, she had a real problem with uh, Ishmael and Hagar and, and had um, Abraham send them off into the desert. Um, but that's for another study. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, the, the idea here, here that Paul is trying to show us is that, <coughs> is that this is the power of God. This, that God can do the impossible um, and sometimes chooses to do that rather than to let nature take its course. Um, and then moving into um, verses 10 and, uh, through 12, we move to um, the next story. So Abraham and, and, and Sarah, they, they do have a child. His name is Isaac. Isaac gives birth, but he gives birth to twin boys, Esau and Jacob. Huh? Isaac gives birth? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Rebecca. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, wait. Did what? May. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I'm just behind in my slides. Um, Okay, so uh, just so that, that I'm not missing any information, in, chapter, in verse 6 when he says, um, it is not as though God's word has failed, um, basically what he's saying is because some Jews continue to resist gospel, does that mean God has rejected all his chosen people? Um, and then, so this slide is meant to, uh, I don't know if you can see those green arrows, is, it's the idea that this, this whole is um, is created so that a few might act out God's plan. Um, and in, in Romans 11, um, so too at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And that idea of remnant is, is important for us to keep in mind. So, um, oh, went the wrong way. So here is the slide I was looking for either, earlier. So you have Hagar and Ishmael. Um, by Sarah, um, Jacob, or Isaac, excuse me, and then Jacob has, um, uh, uh, yes, we'll get to him in a minute, but um, Esau, and then um, by Keturah, she has six sons. Okay? Yeah. Um, so here is, so, and this is, this is a part of the story is that um, in, within scripture, in, in, in Genesis 18, um, these three strangers come and visit Abraham and Sarah at their tent. And um, some scholars say that these three um, were angels. Um, there are many beautiful icons that have been painted depicting these three as the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. 
um, but they come and and it, which was the custom of the time, Abraham and Sarah showed hospitality, meaning they had them sit down, let us feed you, here is some water. And because of their graciousness, um, one of the angels or one of the Godhead says that, that you know, you, this is when they say, you were go Sarah, you're going to have a child. And Sarah Actually, he says this to Abraham because it wasn't appropriate for women to sit with the men while they're eating. Um, Sarah is in the tent, and when she hears this, being the good wife she is, she's eavesdropping. Um, she hears this, she laughs. And that's where they get the name Isaac. She who laughs. That's what Isaac's name means. Um, and yeah, so, okay, but now, and then moving on. So Isaac marries Rebecca. And they and Rebecca um, is um, uh, told uh, that she that that she will have twins, but the favor will rest on the second son. So Esau is the is the the, the first twin born, um, and it in the in scripture um, it says that that Esau was born with Jacob holding on to his the ankle. So you know like. He was holding him back, maybe. I don't know. But the favor of God, or the remnant, passes through, not to Esau, the oldest, but to Jacob. Okay. Um, okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, so the, the takeaway of all this is that God's ways are not our ways. Um, and that the grace of God, one of the things we, we have to constantly put to the, the front of our brain is that it, the, the grace of God does not rest on our merits. Um, Abraham was not a sinless man. Jacob was not a sinless man. Um, but God's favor, like in this list, God's favor does not depend on on our our merit it depends on our openness to be used as God's vessel um, verse 13 when oh yeah so verse 13 where it says um, as it is written Jacob I loved but Esau I hated so again this is one of those times when the scholars go um, mm, I don't know um, some of them made the comment, though, that they, they, did God hate Esau? No, because Esau, actually, in, in Genesis, there, God shows favor to Esau and the Edomites. Um, but they, that it is written this way um, to show a sense of differentiation between the two, you know, is to separate them. Not that God hated Esau, but that... The fa his favor rested on Jacob. Okay? All right. With that, we are going to read verses 14 through 18. What then are we to say? Is there injustice on the part of God? Of course not. For he says to Moses, I will show mercy to whom I will. I will take pity on whom I will. So it depends not upon a person's will or exertion, but upon God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, This is why I have raised you up, to show my power through you, that my name may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Consequently, he has mercy upon whom he wills, and he hardens whom he wills. Comments, questions, concerns, feelings, philosophies, ideas. So essentially, what <clears throat> um, what we're doing <coughs> is uh, is he's now taking another step. Saint Paul is taking another step in salvation history, but he in verse fourteen. We have one of those moments where St. Paul is 
putting himself in the place of someone who is he's sharing this discussion with and this other person is asking the question um, is there injustice on God's part then you know because God is saying to some I, I favor you and to some that that I don't um, is is God you know playing is God playing favorites absolutely but is that an injustice and what does St. Paul say by no means you know that's emphatic I always love it when I see an exclamation point after something in scripture um, by no means um, and then he goes on to um, to share a story about Moses um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, to, uh, Moses and Pharaoh, and he's kind of interweaving those stories. So um, Pharaoh, um, which actually happens before the golden calf, but he starts off with the golden calf. I guess his sense of time is not, uh, or linear time is not all that good. Um, he, he, just in terms of the story, we all know, um, Moses goes to, you know, let, to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh hardens the, uh, it says in scripture that God hardens the heart of Pharaoh. And so St. Paul is going to talk about that. Um, and after um, nine plagues, the 10th plague comes and the, the, um, it says in scripture that God softened the heart of Pharaoh and Pharaoh allowed the people so, well, that's not really fair. That's not very just. You know, God makes some people's hard, hearts hard. And that's what St. Paul is saying, but that's not what St. Paul means. Um, and then later we get to the, the, the Mount Sinai and the golden calf, and that's where we are in, in um, verse 14. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, no, no, not verse um Verse, uh, excuse me, I did not. In verse, verse 15, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. That's a quote from Exodus. Um, the, um, and as, so what happens is Moses is coming down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, and the Israelites in the the 40 days that Moses was on the mountain they're freaking out they're in the middle of the desert they 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 don't know um, uh, you know where they are they they don't know what their future is going to look like they're remembering at least they had a bed and they they had um, more than bread and quail to eat um, you know and so they start freaking out and they decide that since that Moses has died up there so they're going to go back to the religions that they had when they were in Egypt and they 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 build they collect the gold and they build a golden calf and they worship that calf and just as they're worshiping down the mountain comes Moses and um, and that's where the breaking of the, of the tablet but Moses and then God then have this conversation and God is, it says to Moses, and the plan was to completely annihilate the Israelites. Just wipe them all out. God, just like and with Noah, you're not, you're, you're not living the way I want you to live. You're not getting the clue. So we're going to start over again. Clean slate. And that just like with Noah, Moses was going to begin the next chapter. And Moses argues with God and says, you know, not to do that. And, um, uh, you know, he, he um, yeah, so that, da, 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 da. Um, uh, basically he does convince Moses, or Moses does convince God to, to, to punish the Israelites and that's why they wander in the desert for 40 years. And if you ever look at a map, you know, Huh? It's not 40 years worth of wandering from where they were to where they were meant to go. Um, and, and it has more to do, it also has to do with 
when they get there, they actually do go from the mountain to the promised land, and they don't, again, they don't trust God. And so God says, mm. so here he says, I'm not going to wipe you out. There he says, you're wandering. I'm, I, okay, okay, I'm not wiping you out, but I'm going to wipe you out in that I'm going to let the next generation get into the promised land. Um, and, and so this is, uh, he's most, uh, mo uh, St. Paul is quoting what God says to Moses in, in Genesis at the end of the conversation with the golden calf, when he says, I, I, God, will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So basically he's saying to Moses, okay, I'm going to have compassion on these people. Um, does that make sense? Any questions? I see perplexed looks, on, or maybe it's boredom. I'm just reading it as perplexed. Um, okay, then, then he goes on in, in, verse, um, uh, in, in verse 17, takes a step back, and he goes to, to um, talk about Pharaoh. And here he's having a conversation in regards to the hardening of heart. So God will show his, his favor on uh, on the remnant so that 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 his salvation his plan of salvation can come to fulfillment but for that to happen sometimes bad stuff has to happen um, the Israel so when big step back um, Joseph Technicolor Dreamcoat um, famine in the land Jacob's other 11 sons and, and their wives and their children and their tribes um, are in the famine. They come to Egypt um, where, where food is plenty and Joseph can watch over them. And I'm sure in God's mind, and I'm being very human, humanistic here, God's saying, okay, the famine's over, go home. And the Israelites are going, wait, this is very comfortable, you know. Not only do we have plenty of food, this is a beautiful land, and we have a favored nation status because our brother is second to the Pharaoh. We're going to stay put for a while. 400 years they stay put. So something has to happen to get that crowbar under their butts and lift them up and get them back on task. Okay? So what what St. Paul is is offering in terms of the Pharaoh, um, okay, sorry, <laughs> I need to look at my notes more often, huh? Um, you know, we do nothing to receive or deserve the gift, the deserve uh, what God showers upon us. Um, the second is that um, God has a plan of salvation that was begun the moment Adam and Eve left paradise. There are those who participate and do their part and bring about God's overall salvation for ourselves and others. And there are those who, by fortune of their birth and how their lineage adds to this plan, benefit from God's mercy. Okay, so now we're, we're with Pharaoh. Um, and um, um, so bad things have to happen because it then allows for the good to come. And it's not... God, what St. Paul is, is sharing or telling us here, God did not harden the heart of Pharaoh. God allowed the hard heart of Pharaoh to exist. Does that make sense? Um, at any time, the Pharaoh could have said, okay, go, get out of here. Water, the, the Nile turns to blood. That would have convinced me, you know. Um, having frogs everywhere, locusts, I would have said, go, get out of here, be gone. Uh, so, but it took nine, uh, it took ten plagues, the last affecting, not, not that all the others didn't affect him personally, but this affected him where it really, really hurt. His lineage, his oldest son was killed. And so that, that, that's what it took. So um, um, the, yeah, um, God, what St. Paul is, is, is offering in, in, in 17 and 18, um, 
For scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power to you so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So a part of it is, this is who you are. I'm going to work with that. That's what God is saying. But a part of my working with that is that I can show my power, my glory, my awesomeness. Um, so then he has mercy upon whomever he wills, and he hardens the hearts of whomever he wills. Again, allows for, the, for someone's heart to be hardened. Um, I'm, uh, okay. Comments, questions, concerns. Yes, ma'am. Um, so all the people who um, were just, uh, okay, the, the, it, it, the bigger question is, every, every, it, it, scripture tells us that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he opened the gates of heaven, okay? Where did all those people go before the gates of heaven were, were opened? So you have all these people throughout the whole Old Testament that, because the gates were closed with Adam and Eve and were open again with Jesus, you have two, basically 2,000 years of history and all those generations, where did those people go? And, and so um, simply put, um, they, they went to, um, they, didn't, they didn't go to hell, they didn't go to purgatory, they kind of, well, they went to a waiting room essentially is the best way to put that, huh? The land of the dead. The land of the dead, yes. Um, and it, basically they were waiting for, for Christ to open the doors of, of uh, gates of heaven. So yeah, all those people who died, not only you know, um, with um, um, Noah, but throughout all of the Old Testament, that's where they went. Okay? Okay. Comments, questions, concerns? Okay, so to drive this point even further, um, uh, Paul is going to share with, to, with, which is one of my favorite images in terms of the power of God and the will of God and what God's, God can do and cannot do. So, um, uh, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good and for those who are called according to his purpose. So that's, keep that in mind. And now... Boy, I did not do a good job. You can tell I did this when I was tired. Um, okay, but we're going we're gonna, to um, verse, uh, so we're looking at verses 19 to 29. You will say to me then, why then does he still find fault? For who can oppose his will? But who indeed are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Will what is made said to its maker, say to its maker, Why have you created me so? Or does not the potter have the right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for a noble purpose and another for an ignoble one? What if God, wishing to show his wrath, and make known his power, has endured with much patience the vessels of wrath made for destruction. This was to make known the riches of his glory to the vessels of mercy, which he has prepared previously for glory, namely, for us whom he has called, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. As indeed he says in Hosea, those who were not my people, I will call my people. And her who is not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there, shall, there they shall be called children of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the Israelites were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will be saved. For decisively and quickly will the Lord execute sentence upon the earth. And as Isaiah predicted, unless the Lord of hosts had left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom and have made, 
and have been made like Gomorrah. Comments, questions, feelings, ideas, concerns. Um, so again, this um, as we enter into verse 19, St. Paul is continuing his imaginary conversation. Um, you know, so when he says, you will say to me then, so you, you, you know, why does, why, um, why, does, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? In other words, um, this gets into the whole conversation of predestination. You know, about, um, our, and, and there are people who choose, who, who walk away from faith in general because they don't want to want to believe in a God who is a divine pu puppet master. And they, 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 they want to celebrate and live in their free will, which God would want them to. Um, but this is also where some Christian denominations get into this idea that before you were born, it's like God set down and created a map of exactly, and so you have no control. You really don't have any control of where, how you're living your life. Um, it, it, it's all been predetermined. And um, what, uh, what St. Paul, so that's basically, you know, why, why does he still find fault? How can you fault someone for doing what you're, you're like the Pharaoh? You hardened his heart. So how can you call him sinful? Um, you see, so you see what, what this, where the conversation is now moving to. Um, and we have to remember, um, okay, hold on. Uh, um, God does, no, does God use humanity as pawns in some divine game of his own making? You know, that's kind of the, the struggle this imaginary person, bless you, is, uh, is going through. But we have to remember that St. Paul never said that God's intervention, intervention um, suppresses our free will. So, like with the Pharaoh, his heart was hardened, okay? His choice. He was the one who said no, no, nine times, no. Um, uh, he never forced Mary to say yes when the angel came to her. It was her free will. Because that's a part of our gift to God um, in our saying yes. And, I, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where, where someone is doing something and you know they're doing it because they have to. They're doing something for you. And they're doing it because they have to. How does that make you feel? It's like, don't do it, you know. I, there's a couple of times that, that um, when my daughter was growing up, um, she did some things, you know, she did some nice things for me, but in a very begrudging, like, you know, the, uh, way. And it's like, my response is, don't do it for me then. If you don't want to do this, then I don't want you to do it. I, if, if, you, if you mean this to be a Mother's Day tribute, well, it's not, you know. Um, so, you know, that's the beauty of love. Love does out of, uh, of, of a choice. Um, and the other part of it, too, Paul never said that those who did participate in God's plan of salvation, but in a negative way, like the Pharaoh, that they got off scot-free. It's not like they got rewarded for doing, doing a bad thing. That just as you and I, well, I, you are all great people, you will never see a day in purgatory. I will be there for a long time. You know, <laughs> that, <coughs> that, that they still had to, um, um, uh, uh, what, uh, what do I want to say? Um, yeah, but you get the idea. They, 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 they had to show that, that they recognized that what they did was wrong and, and, um, and do their penance for that, okay? 
Um, but as we move into, um, into, chat, into verse 20, where he says, um, but who are you to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to the molder, why have you made me thus? So Paul is kind of like doubling down and saying, okay, I didn't, did, you know, yes, God has used this, but he's now doubling down and saying, because he's the creator. You know, who are you to question God? Um, he's challenging us in our arrogance and, and challenging us in our questioning God. Um, uh, God is, in, and his point is, God is not answerable to us. God is creator. We are the created. And then we have this beautiful image of the potter and the clay. Um, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel into honor and another into dishonor? So think of, um, uh, of you know, I, I, if you, uh, clay even today comes in these huge lumps and they have to cut out a piece. So in that huge lump, and that's, again, going back to that picture with all those people and a few arrows. Uh, and this, this becomes a water jug. This becomes a sacred vessel. But it's from the same lump. And, and that's, you know, um, that's what uh, St. Paul is, is saying to us is that this, because God is the creator and we are the created, we, we, ha we fall... Um, into the hands of God to be created in the way God intends, not, not the other way around. Um, and he's using the, the, these images. I'm just, um, um, I'm, I'm coming to the opinion that St. Paul um, had an eidetic memory. Do you know what an eidetic memory is? You know, that, yeah, they, that total re recall. Read something once and they can, they can re 20 years ago, they read something and they can recite it and never looked at it again, but they can recite it from memory. I, I truly believe because, so he, this is not a unique image because St. Paul is actually borrowing the same image from Jeremiah and from Isaiah. And both of these prophets, God used these images <laughs> to help them understand um, what he, he w God was doing within terms of salvation history. Um, and then, so, um, so in verses 22 and 23, um, he's continuing on uh, with this thought that, you know, the objects of mercy. Uh, let's see, let's look at, uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, in verse, at the end of verse 22, I'm just going to read all of 22. What if, what if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience the vessels of wrath made for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for the vessels of mercy? So taking that image of the potter, making these vessels... The vessels of wrath are those like the Pharaoh, whose hearts are hardened, and they do bad stuff. Um, I have a new perspective now on bad stuff that happens, and bad people. I'm not excusing them. I, don't, I, I love them. I don't like them. I'm not going to uh, support or enable them. But I, I more un understand now how bad people and bad stuff can be the purpose of God's plan of salvation, okay? Um, and that the vessels of mercy are those, re the remnant, those that are a part of, of, of um, allowing or are participating in God's plan of salvation. Um, okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. So this is one of those moments, too, where if you don't, if, uh, verses 22 and 23, if, if it doesn't necessarily on first read or second read or third read doesn't make sense, it's because he starts off, it's, it, this is a, um, um, he starts off with an if clause. And if this happens, 
then this is going to happen, right? But there's no then. St. Paul doesn't give us a then. And um, two scholars, um, Scott Hahn and, and I can't think of the gentleman's, but m last name is Mitch, offer that actually how verses, uh, verse 23, to put a little caveat in there, it says, so if all of this is then, isn't it within the scope of God's freedom to do so? You know? So let me read it fully that way. What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience the vessels of wrath made for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for the vessels of mercy which he has prepared beforehand for glory? Then isn't it within the scope of God's freedom to do so? That makes sense? Okay. Um, 20, verse 24 and he moves forward to look at the present moment. So now he's looking, present moment meaning um, first century J Jerusalem. In Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, and he now, Paul, is talking to the Romans. And he's quoting, um, the first quote comes, as it says in scripture, in the, here in the scripture, comes from Hosea. Um, you know, um, I will call them my people, who are not my people, and I will call her my love, who is not my, lo my love or beloved. And, I will, and it will happen that in this very place where it is said to them, you are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. So this is taking us all the way back to the beginning. Where how, how come, you know, who gets to be a part of God's chosen people? And, and what St. Paul is saying, you know, um, God, that 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 God is God. It, it's God's choice. It's God's power um, to determine who belongs and who doesn't belong to Him. And now, what Saint Paul is saying is that essentially we all belong to God, and that you know, because again, going back to one of those earlier questions, what about those twelve tribes of Israel? Remember. God was going to restore those 12 tribes of Israel. Well, what St. Paul is offering here is he did. He did restore the 12 tribes of Israel through Jesus Christ. Because in some ways, if you think about it, all that intermarrying that was going on, we all probably have a drop of Jewish blood or Israelite blood in us, in our lineage. Because at some point, we can, we, if we had the powers to do so, and RJ, I, I challenge you to do this, to do, because he's into his lineage, all the way back to Adam and Eve, okay? <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's, it's, St. Paul is saying that this is, this is all a part of the salvation history, and we're all uh, meant to be a part of God's beloved. Um, yeah that I'm calling all of you into relationship. Um, and through Jesus Christ, that becomes, that, that, that all those calls that, uh, that were offered um, at the beginning are now being offered once again through Jesus Christ. Um, okay, does that make sense? Okay, beating a dead horse. Um, that, you know, he, that he's arguing that, the, that, yeah, the gospel, the, it, um, brings to fulfillment this plan of salvation. Um, okay, so uh, Romans 27 and 28. That's taken from Isaiah. Um, and, it's, and it's basically the same conversation. Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, again, I was doing this in the wee hours of the mo morning, so... <laughs> um, let me read it here in my, in, you know, um, as Isaiah, Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the numbers of, of children of Israel be as sands of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence upon the eager, um, the earth with rigor and dispatch. Okay. Um, the, the same conversation. The, the, the challenge is that, God seeks to save all. The ball is in our court. 
because God is offering a lifeboat doesn't mean everybody's going to get in. And, that, and so Isaiah and, and um, uh, Hosea are both, they, they are receiving this, this uh, message of God um, at, um, b just before um, Assyria marches into destroy the land. And, um, and so what you see here to the, and, and so when you go to verse 29, um, when he says, um, da -da 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 -da, verse 20, and as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us, left us children, so if, if God had not protected the, a, a remnant, a lineage, we would, be, we would have fared like Sodom and, and Gomorrah. Okay? And we, we remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, that, um, you know, and, and interestingly enough, Lot in, uh, argued with God and said, or argued with the angel and said, because um, the angel said, I, you know, leave, get out of here, I've got to protect you, um, I'm going to destroy this, the, this Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and Lot said, well, if there, or Abraham, I, anyway, if, if there are 50 righteous, would you not destroy you know, if there are 40 righteous, you know, couldn't even find 10 righteous people. That's why it was destroyed. But God was willing to save the um, Sodom and Gomorrah if there were um, a few righteous people remaining within the, the confines of the city. The picture to your right is a picture of um, Assyria storming the gates of Jerusalem. And so um, Hezekiah was the king and prophet of, uh, um, or no, was it his? anyway. Um, and he, he, they prayed to God. He had everybody get down on their knees and pray that God would save Jerusalem. And, and, and so Jerusalem was saved. But again, it's this, this whole idea that that, that the evil that is within our hearts, <clears throat> God can use for the good um, or for destruction, and, but always the, 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 the remnant will be saved. And I'm going to shut up there because um, I think I'm just repeating myself. Comments, questions, concerns before we pray. Yes, Paul. Consider, concerning Judith? Judith. 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 Oh. Oh, okay. Um, now, in the light of the, 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 the potter and everything that good or bad, I know he could have repented like Peter. Right. But that begs the bigger question, was there always going to be someone that he could be? And did they have to make that decision? So, and, that, and that, that, that actually, as we, we're moving into Holy Week soon, that's that's important thing for us to remember. You know, there, again, histor historically speaking, there has always been this hatred spewed at Judas um, because he was the one who betrayed Christ. But, again, someone had to, you know. Um, uh, and so, he, again, in this, you know, Paul's argument, is that uh, God uses hard hearts to bring about the plan of salvation. And, and one of the things that I, I, the difference between Judas and Peter, because Peter betrayed Christ as well, is that Judas despaired. You know, he recognized, his heart was softened, he recognized what he had done and he was sorry for what he had done but he despaired and didn't believe that God's mercy would envelop him whereas yeah, Peter did yeah and that's the ultimate sin that God, can't that God won't for it that, that God chooses to not yeah okay yes sir
Yeah. So, and I, I know you're uh, you're asking that with as a rhetorical question, and you in the answer you have, um, but the just for the sake of conversation here, um, if Judas had gone to the foot of the cross, what words would would he have heard on the lips of Christ? Forgive them, Lord. Father, forgive them. They, they do, yeah. So now whether the apostles would have had that, that kind of compassionate heart, we can only hope. Um, Peter certainly would have because he would have seen his own, um, you know. But it, that, it, the, <coughs> that's why the um, trusting in God, I, I'm... Um, in my own prayer, my own spiritual, Lenten spiritual journey, that has been trust and obey. Those are the two words that I keep coming back to. Trust and obey. Don't get it. Don't understand it. I don't even like it. Don't want it. You know, put all those negative things in there. That's where I'm at, Lord. But I have to, uh, but I choose. I choose to trust you and I choose to obey you. And that's where... A lot of people get off track, is that I'm afraid to trust you, um, I won't trust you, and I, therefore I won't obey. I'm going to take matters into my own hand. So, um, Okay, with that, we're beyond time, and I know some of you are going to lunch over in the other room, so let us, let us pray. And I would like to um, begin by praying um, in gratitude for... Um, that, that my daughter's prayer of being able to go part-time has been, the issues have been worked out and that she soon will be able to go part-time. So in gratitude for that answered prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and I ask, what else shall we pray for? My grandson will get a job. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For my family, let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our country as we move further into our um, campaigning um, that it, justice and truth will prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for those prayers that rest deep within our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for all that you are. And we give praise and thanksgiving for the mercy and compassion you show to us for all that we are not. We ask, Lord, that as we move into these final weeks of Lent, that we will be more mindful and more aware um, of how undeserving we are of your mercy and compassion, of your gift of the cross, of your gift of salvation. Give us the strength to proclaim your love through our lives and in our words. And give us the strength to, to continue to seek and know you. These things we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we acknowledge that you are God and we are not by saying glory, glory be to, to the God Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. And we end as we began in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.